In this video, I'm going to share three ways that fasting can help you prevent heart attacks. So I'm a PA and I work in the emergency room and people come in all the time for chest pain. It's actually the second most common reason why people come into the emergency room. And of course, if they're having chest pain, most of the time the question on their mind is, am I having a heart attack? So we do various tests and things to try to figure that out. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do upstream to, to, in many cases, hopefully, prevent that from ever happening. So I'm going to share three ways that fasting will help you reduce your risk of having a heart attack. So let's start with blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, and so many people have high blood pressure these days, it's a big risk factor for heart attacks. When I say risk factor, that means it increases your risk quite a bit of having a heart attack. So there are a couple ways that fasting can help normalize or fix high blood pressure. One of those is intermittent fasting has been shown to increase parasympathetic tone. What does that mean? Well, it just means that it's activating that part of your nervous system that's more relaxing, calming. So there's the fight and flight, which is the sympathetic nervous system, and then there's the rest and digest or relaxing side, which is the parasympathetic nervous system. So fasting kind of causes more relaxation, including your blood vessels and things like that. So it can help to normalize blood pressure. Another big reason why fasting helps with blood pressure is insulin. So that hormone called insulin, it's related to blood sugar and diabetes and all that. But when insulin is high, your kidneys hold on to more water and more salt. And when insulin kind of gets back into the normal range, your kidneys aren't holding on to so much water. You don't retain so much water anymore. And so if more fluid goes out, then naturally your blood pressure is lower. So if you're able to normalize your blood pressure, fix your high blood pressure, then you'll have a significantly lower risk of having a heart attack. So the second way that fasting helps reduce your risk of having a heart attack is cholesterol. So cholesterol is kind of a complicated topic and it's very misunderstood, but I'll just share a couple simple points about it here. So number one is LDL is not as important as most people think it is. LDL is that so-called bad cholesterol, but it actually isn't a very good measurement of your risk of having a heart attack. You would have to drill down to really get much useful information from it, like the particle size and the particle number and oxidized LDL. And there's various other things, and most of the doctors out there are not checking any of those things. They're just checking like your total cholesterol and your LDL and a couple other measurements that I'll get into in a second. So LDL is not really something to focus on in most cases, but here's a better measurement from your cholesterol panel for your heart risk the triglyceride to HDL ratio. So triglycerides and HDL are both on your lipid panel, in other words, your cholesterol panel, and you can check the ratio. And a good ratio is below about two. So for example, if you had your triglyceride level was 100 and your HDL level was 50, your ratio would be exactly two. And that would be pretty good, but you want to be under two, ideally. And guess what's really good at lowering your triglycerides? If you, if you have high triglycerides, what's good at lowering them? Fasting is really good at that, and so is eating low carb. So those are some really good ways to reduce your triglyceride to HDL ratio, which means you'll have a significantly lower risk of having a heart attack or other heart-related problems. So the third way that fasting reduces your risk of heart attacks is diabetes. So diabetes is actually a gigantic risk factor for having heart attacks. People with type 2 diabetes are much more likely to have heart attacks than people that don't have diabetes. And diabetes is a disease of high insulin. Of course, you know it for the high blood sugar, but that's more of a downstream effect. The high insulin is kind of the root cause of type 2 diabetes. Fasting is good at lowering the blood sugar and the insulin, which means it's pretty good at preventing diabetes and even reversing it or you know, putting it into remission in many cases. So if you're able to kind of normalize your blood sugar, normalize your insulin, you'll have a much lower risk. You'll be a lot less likely to have a heart attack. Now, none of this is 100% obviously, but you just want to do the best you can to have a lower risk of having something like a heart attack so you can live a long, productive, and happy life. Another big risk factor for heart attacks is obesity, no pun intended. 
Um, and if, you're, if you are someone who is obese or overweight and you're wondering the best way to lose weight, I have a video right here that explains why fasting works better than calorie restriction diets. Three reasons why fasting is more effective for losing weight than reducing calories. So you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.